Hello, and welcome back to the studio. I'm Dr. Wiggo, and today we're going to be talking about the new M5 chip from Apple and the products they announced it to be in. Just when I thought I was out, Apple pulls me back in. Yeah, I spent three weeks talking about iPhones, and I thought I was done with that for a while, but then this week they announced the M5 in one of the worst kept secrets in Apple history. We all knew the M5 was coming. Well, it's here, and here are the products it's in, which are the ones that were rumored, so no real news here, but there's some interesting stuff. And I'll run through it with you in case you missed all this. Because unless you're a real tech nerd, I mean, well, you'll see, these products are not that exciting. No real story this week, so I'm just gonna get into it. We're gonna talk about the M5 chip, and then the M5 iPad Pro, and then the M5 MacBook Pro, and then the M5 Vision Pro. What? A new Vision Pro? Not really, we'll talk about it when we get there. Let's just dive right in, shall we? So Apple announced on Wednesday the M5, the latest of their fancy new processors, and it's pretty good. And some of the things I'm gonna talk about are gonna sound familiar based on the A19 stuff that I talked about in those videos. I'll link those down below. So the new M5 is a 10-core CPU, 10-core GPU. The base model, no Pro, Max, or Ultra yet. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. The M5 is a big improvement. It has four times the peak GPU performance for AI compared to M4. That's a big change. But if you remember from the A19 video, which I will link down below, they've added a neural accelerator in each GPU core to enable all these improvements in AI processing. And we're not talking about Apple intelligence. We're talking about like local LLM models, like the kind of stuff you can buy and download if you're really into this kind of stuff. Real Apple intelligence is still a ways away. But when it finally gets here, this processor and the subsequent ones are gonna be well prepared to do a lot of great AI performance and AI scaling. But that's not all. The graphics performance of the M5 is 30% faster than the M4. That's just one back. And their third generation ray tracing updates make this 45% faster than the M4 for ray tracing. Again, one step back. The CPU has four performance cores and six efficiency cores for 15% faster multi-threaded performance than the M4. 15% faster in one little iteration. And they've upped the memory bandwidth another 30%. They keep doing this. So we're up to 153 gigabytes per second and the M5 supports up to 32 gigabytes of memory. So this is a big improvement memory-wise over the M4. That's the chip. Now the products, the M4 iPad Pro has now been replaced with the M5 iPad Pro. Like the M4 iPad Pro, the 256 gig and 512 gigabyte models only have nine core CPUs, bin chips, but then when you update to the one terabyte and two terabyte, then you get the full 10 cores. I don't know, ask Apple. Because of the M5 chip, we get 3.5 times faster AI performance over the M4 iPad Pro. And that's not all. The new M5 iPad Pro also has the N1 chip for the Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 6, and Thread support, and the C1X cellular chip, which is up to 50% faster and 30% more efficient than the modem chips in the M4 iPad Pro. More importantly, the SSD speeds have been increased to up to two times faster. That's a big change. And they're up to 12 gigabytes of memory from eight gigabytes, like the iPhone 17 Pros. The M5 iPad Pro supports fast charging, so you can get 50% charge in 30 minutes. Otherwise, it's the same Ultra Retina XDR display with 1,000 nits for SDR and up to 1,600 nits for HDR. And like the M4 iPad Pro, the Nano texture surface is only available on the one terabyte and two terabyte models, and it still has the magic keyboard in black and white. Now, I saw some people saying, well, it wasn't available in black before. If you go watch my M4 iPad Pro video, I had a black magic keyboard. Maybe they discontinued it after I bought it, but I had one, which I returned. There's a video, I'll link that down below, because I needed the white one so I could see the keys. It's a story. Moving on to the new M5 MacBook Pro, this is a chip replacement. There's not a lot of improvement here. It's only available in the 14 inch. It does have 24 hour battery life. The SSDs are faster like they are in the iPad Pro. And the nano texture 
thing on the screen is available across all the models, all the configuration. So it gets all the benefits of the new M5 chip, the faster AI, the faster all that, but it's really just a chip replacement. Whereas the iPad Pro, they put in the N1 and the C1X, so that one's a lot fancier. This is mainly a chip replacement, faster SSDs, and of course the faster memory bandwidth, but that's on the chip. It's just a chip replacement. Which brings us to the M5 Vision Pro. Really? Another Vision Pro? Yeah, don't get so excited. It's a chip replacement only. They have just replaced the M2 chip in the original Vision Pro with the M5 chip. Basically all the components and parts that have been sitting in warehouses because nobody's been buying Vision Pros, well, they're repurposing them into this new Vision Pro. It's not new, but maybe they can sell a few more and get some of those parts out of the inventory. The M5 chip does make the Vision Pro better. In the foveated rendering, it can now render 10% more pixels. So the stuff that's in your peripheral vision, a little less of it will be out of focus. Not a big change. But it also improves the refresh rate from 90 to 100 hertz up to 120 hertz, just like the iPads and the MacBooks and everybody else. So everybody's 120 hertz screen now. Well, you know, little, little screens over your eyes. You know what I mean. The other major change is they have replaced the solo knit band and the dual loop band with one unified new band called the dual knit band, which is basically the old solo knit with another thing going over the top. There's a picture on the screen, look at it. Now that band makes the overall package slightly heavier, but allegedly that band is gonna take some of the stress off the top, which the dual loop band did not. I'll be buying one of these, they're $99. You can buy them for the existing Vision Pro. And so I will be buying one of these and testing it out. And I'll let you know when I do my next Vision Pro video. This will give me an excuse to do another Vision Pro video. And the Logitech Muse 3D Pencil that they unveiled, I think that was at WWDC, it was a while back. Well, that, that's finally releasing also this week. Ah, uh, but here's the rub, no trade-in program which actually makes sense because Apple doesn't do their own trade-in program. They have third parties that do that for them. And I imagine the third party said, we can't resell these. We can't refurbish them and resell them. And so we're not gonna buy them. If you have an old Vision Pro like me, you're out of luck. You, that, that's what you got. You can't upgrade. Well, you can upgrade for $3,500 because the price did not change. So what is my take on all of this? Well, the M5 is a great new processor. The additional neural engines and the GPU cores and the much faster AI processing and the faster graphics, 1.5 times frame rates in games, but the M5 Pro and the M5 Max and the M5 Ultra maybe will be even better. So my advice is wait for those. Should you upgrade to the M5 iPad Pro? Not really only in very special cases. Like if you're really doing AI modeling and stuff on an iPad, really, get a Mac Studio. Or gaming, AI gaming, those are really the use cases for which the M5 iPad Pro will be a big improvement over the M4 iPad Pro. I will not be upgrading mine. It's not a big enough change to justify the money to me. And there is a trade-in on M4 iPad Pros. I doubt it's very good. What about the M5 MacBook Pro? Should you upgrade to that? Again, probably no, except for the same special cases of AI modeling, which does make a little more sense on a MacBook Pro than on an iPad Pro. Or gaming, again, because of the 1.5 times faster frame rates. And finally, should you upgrade to the M5 Vision Pro? Absolutely not. This is just a ploy by Apple to try to move that existing inventory of parts. They didn't end up selling nearly as many as they thought they were gonna sell and they didn't think they were gonna sell that many to begin with, so this is very disappointing for them. But this is a way to extend its life and maybe sell a few more. So if you don't have a Vision Pro, then this is the one to get. Well, in fact, it's the only one you can get because they're discontinuing the M2 version, and I imagine you can pick one up used for a fairly good price, but do you really want a used Vision Pro? Because without Apple Care, it has a tendency to crack, it has all these things that if you don't have Apple Care, I don't know if they'll give you Apple Care on a used one. So I am not going to upgrade my iPad Pro or my MacBook Pro or my Vision Pro. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna keep my M4 iPad Pro for a few more years. I will upgrade my MacBook Pro possibly to an 
M5 Pro or M5 Max, or maybe M5 Ultra. I will get a new Vision Pro when there is a new Vision Pro. I will not get a simple chip replacement. Vision Pro is still Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. It's a year and a half old, almost two years old now. I'll wait for the new improved version, if there ever is one, because Apple is kind of decommitted. They're more interested now in doing like the glasses kind of thing and not the headset kind of thing. So that's my take on the M5 chip and the products it comes in. That's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye bye. Now I gotta go find something not Apple to talk about. Thanks for staying to the end. Bye bye.